What's going on, baseball fans? Jeremy Laracuente here for the Baseball Banter broadcast. And on this broadcast, we round out our series looking at the state of each and every franchise across Major League Baseball for the 2023 season with my very own New York Yankees. Now, before we get into it, if you want to check out the entire series, there's a playlist down in the show notes below, as well as corresponding articles on each and every team in our on our website laraquenteledger.com i will leave links to the yankee article but you can check out the, the link and check out all the articles for each and every team as well as again the playlist to the video series here on youtube now we begin with the major acquisitions <music> Now, when it comes to the major acquisitions for the New York Yankees, there's one addition and one re-addition. Obviously, this is Carlos Rodon and Aaron Judge that we're discussing. Being able to re-sign Aaron Judge was of the absolute utmost necessity for the New York Yankees. This would not have been a Yankees team without Aaron Judge. Yes, this is your homegrown superstar player. And as the New York Yankees, the most profitable franchise in Major League Baseball, to not be able to re-sign your own superstar would have been an absolute disgrace. No other team was in such a dire necessity outside of maybe the Red Sox and Rafael Devers for different reasons. But being able to re-sign Aaron Judge was a need for the Yankees. Yes, they've been able to go through and have superstars develop on their own. But this was your homegrown star, one of the best, if not the best player in Major League Baseball. There's an argument for that. And this is an opportunity for the Yankees to really solidify themselves as the premier franchise. If you lose your star, your own guy to free agency and he departs to another team, that's a huge blow for the organization. Outside of that, you had to go in and add more, which was what the addition of Carlos Rodon does for the New York Yankees. Yes, there could have been a little bit more done this offseason, but being able to re-solidify the rotation and even more so and more importantly, bringing back your own superstar player, your leader, your now captain is and was the most important thing for the New York Yankees to accomplish. Now, when it comes to significant injuries, at the time of this writing, it was Frankie Montas and Carlos Rodon. But at the time of this recording, we can also add in Luis Severino. When you look at what the Yankees rotation was supposed to have been, this was going to be arguably the best starting rotation in baseball in 2023. When you had a guy like Frankie Montas, who was formerly viewed as an ace level pitcher as your number five guy, was going to be an absolutely dynamic starting rotation. Again, arguably the best in 2023 or arguably one of the best of all time. Now, we know that's not going to be the case as three fifths of the Yankees original projected starting rotation is now on the IL. They're on the injured list. With that, you're going to face a lot of pressure on some younger arms in that rotation for New York to really be able to solidify themselves as a legitimate starting pitching threat and rotation. Now, Frankie Montas is likely going to be done for the year. We may see him back in August, September. At that point, I don't necessarily think the Yankees are going to even going to want to entertain the idea of having him as a regular starter, a regular member of that rotation. Luis Severino and Carlos Rodon should be back much sooner than that. Hopefully no later than the middle of May for either one of those two guys. It still allows the Yankees to be able to kind of hold water and and keep their heads above water with the pitchers that they have while they wait for these two injured stars to come back. Now, as we discuss the top prospect for the New York Yankees, it is Anthony Volpe. The shortstop got the nod for opening day. We would see that a few days ago. This is going to be an absolutely dynamic player, in my opinion. I also believe that for New York, being able to bring up this top prospect, being able to bring up your star player at a position that you have held off from over the past two years was because of this very player. The Yankees, for the last two off-seasons, have declined on all the premium shortstops that were available. You're talking, and if you really think back to the last two years, Carlos Correa, Javier Baez, Corey Seager, Trey Turner, 
Dansby Swanson, Xander Bogart, all of these premier household names at the position of shortstop were all completely ignored by the New York Yankees. And if you stretch it back even further, Manny Machado was a free agent who obviously went to San Diego to play third base, but could have been kept as a shortstop and New York could have signed him as a free agent. They ignored all of these potential players, all of these super superstar names in efforts of being able to have Anthony Volpe be their sh starting shortstop. Here we have it. He played tremendously through spring training and put himself in a position where he could not be denied the starting day shortstop job from the New York Yankees. And that's what the Yankees are going to have. Obviously, if you listen to Yankees Twitter, there's a ton of comparisons to Derek Jeter for many, many reasons. But I think that more than anything else, what I like about this player is the dedication that he has to his craft. We would hear the stories about how Brian Cashman would give him a call. Hey, you have a real chance here. And this kid worked his tail off to be able to put himself in that position and has won the job. Now, as we look at the bold prediction for the New York Yankees, I believe that my team will win the World Series. Yes, it is a bold prediction and will likely be ridiculed as just being a Yankee fanboy. But to me, there's an opportunity for this team to really solidify themselves as a legitimate World Series contender. Yes, they're going to have to go through Houston. They're going to have to go through some very strong teams in the National League to be able to win the World Series. I think that if New York can hold water for the first couple of months of the season while they get back guys like Luis Severino, Carlos Rodon, there's going to be an opportunity for them to really solidify themselves as the World Series favorite, in my opinion. Yes, there's going to be questions right now with this squad beyond just the starting rotation. How is Anthony Volpe going to translate his minor league success to the major leagues? What are the Yankees going to do with left field? There are questions about this team, but I think that by the trading deadline, the Yankees will have solidified all of those questions, thoughts, and concerns. To me, the Yankees are going to have enough starting pitching depth to be able to hold water while they get their stars back. And I do believe a real player is Anthony Volpe. I do believe in his talents, and I think that he's going to have a very good season for the New York Yankees in 2023. And I think when it comes to the left field situation, that to me is still a work in progress. But I think that by the trading deadline, the Yankees will have either had one of their own players really step it up or they're going to acquire a difference maker at that position. So believe me, it may sound like I'm just a Yankee fan that is just bolstering my own team, but I do believe this team has the chance to win the World Series. Now, when it comes to the divisional rankings predictions, we have an article on LaRaquentaLedger.com as well as a video here on the Baseball Banter broadcast in which we say that the New York Yankees are going to win the AL East division. And I still stand by that. Yes, there are questions, as I just said. Yes, the Blue Jays look like a legitimate, formidable threat. Yes, the Rays are always a team that's in contention. But to me, the Yankees have just a little bit different of a feel in 2023, and I believe that they're going to win the division. Last season, when we said the Yankees were going to win the division and the Blue Jays were going to finish in second, was ridiculed for it. But that turned out to be the case, and I very much believe the same will happen this season. Now, when it comes to grading out the pitching staff for the New York Yankees, it gets a B-plus overall grade. Now, that was prior to some of these injuries to Carlos Rodon, to Luis Severino. Now, that being said, there's still a plus uh, potential for this pitching staff to really be able to solidify themselves. Yes, the Yankees are going to rely now much more heavily on the bullpen than was initially anticipated. But I think that the Yankees have enough depth within their organization to be able to really solidify themselves with an opportunity. As long as they're being able to hold water and the injuries kind of hold themselves off from this point forth, the Yankees will have a very good chance to be able to get themselves into a prime position with their pitching staff. Yes, obviously injuries are a big factor and could easily derail this team even further than it already looks like. But if they can get their pitchers back healthy, this is a team that absolutely has a chance to push towards the postseason and further.
when it comes to grading out the offense for the New York Yankees, this is a B plus overall grade. Now, I think that is because there's still question marks to me as far as the left field situation. I also believe that there's question marks in terms of how healthy is DJ LeMahieu. Beyond that, what are you actually going to get from your catching situation? We would see Jose Trevino in 2022, the first half of 2022, be an absolutely tremendous offensive talent. But the second half, there was real regression towards his more career average means. You also have Kyle Higashioka, who really has not put on any sort of offensive prowess for a very long time. Yes, he will run into some. He has that type of power. But overall, this is a team that has some question marks at the lower half of their order. But I do believe that the Yankees have an opportunity to really put themselves in a position of success with the front the top half of their order and the depth that they have in that top half to be able to put up a lot of runs, score a lot of runs and put themselves in a position to succeed night in and night out. When it comes to grading off the off season, it is an A minus grade. Obviously the Yankees had to bring back Aaron judge. There was no question. There was no doubt. They had to bring back Aaron judge. This was a player that was absolutely necessary for this team, not just from a marketing perspective, not just from a baseball perspective, but the entire package of what this player does for this New York Yankees organization from top to bottom was absolutely a necessity. Bringing in Rodon is going to be of a big help. Tommy Kingley to the bullpen, another huge addition. I think New York could have done a little bit more in terms of trying to solidify their outfield situation, the question marks that they have there. But the internal depth that this organization has built up really lended itself to giving a real competition to the guys in-house for spring training, as well as the competition at shortstop. I definitely believe in Anthony Volpe. So being able to kind of ignore the shortstop market that was with the four big superstar shortstops that were available this offseason definitely left a little bit of question and concern early on. But Volpe to me has put those question marks to bed and thus an A minus grade overall for the Yankees offseason. <laughs> Now, when we grade out the franchise as a whole, to me, no doubt about it, an A overall franchise. The Yankees have been the perennial contender each and every single season. Not only that, they have not had a losing season since 1992. This is a team that has truly put itself in a position to be successful year in and year out. Yes, 2022, the way it ended, left an absolutely bitter taste in the mouth of not just the Yankee players, but the Yankee fans. And this is a season in, for redemption. This is a season in which the Yankees are now 13 seasons removed from playing in a World Series, from winning a World Series. For Yankee fans, that is an absolute eternity that grew up during the Jeter era. We now have an opportunity to begin a new era, and it is now the era of Captain Aaron Judge and opening day so i want to thank you guys for tuning in make sure you let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below yankee fans how are you feeling about the yankees chances in 2023 do you believe that this can be a world series contender the same way that i do or am i barking up the wrong tree let me know those thoughts those feelings down in the comment section below or find me over on twitter at banter underscore baseball and we can keep the conversation rolling as always, if you want to find more from us on our social media outlets, you can do so on Instagram and TikTok at Baseball Banter Broadcast. You can also find us more written about all our thoughts, beliefs here on LaRacontaLedger.com. Links to the corresponding article about the state of the 2023 New York Yankees is in the show notes below. So make sure you check that out. If you want to show more support for us here beyond that, you can head over to our merchandise shop, baseballbanterbroadcast.com, in which you can use any one of the number of promo codes that we have on the site to save on some banter merch. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. If you haven't done so already and you're checking us out here on this YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button as well as the bell for post notifications so that every time we drop a new broadcast here about the world of Major League Baseball, you can be a part of that banter. If you're checking us out on our podcast listening platforms and you haven't yet done so, leave a five-star rating and review as it does help us grow this baseball community that we're building here as a part of the Baseball Banter broadcast. So I want to thank you once again for tuning in and I will catch you on the next broadcast when we banter about baseball. Peace. Peace.